two hours of uh, press conferences okay. and trophy presentations and stuff like that and then and then to go into the Derby Museum and have the toast with a uh, with Governor Andy Bashir, it was like, dude, we're just we're just a jockey. We're not supposed to be experiencing all this. So it's a uh, it's a surreal moment, but we're we're enjoying it and soaking it in. That's for sure. I mean, you say you're just a jockey, but all the joy you gave so many people yesterday has that sunk in? It's it's sinking in. You know, it's gonna it's the next couple of weeks are gonna definitely be a lot of fun. So uh, we're just gonna enjoy it and uh, try to give our give our time to everyone and and just enjoy everything we can through this whole experience. Can you walk me through what it was like when you were coming down the final stretch? Yeah, you know, turning right before we turned for home, we shot up the inside of a, a pretty tight. Spot. And then once I once we got through there and and Mr. Dan responded like he did, he switched leads and took off. I'm like, oh man, this can't be happening again. You know, from winning the Oaks the day before, I'm like, there's no way we're about to win the Kentucky Derby. And, and then I, the whole way down the lane, I'm like, wow, we're gonna win the Kentucky Derby. And then right at the wire, those two horses surged at him late, and I'm like, oh no, did we just lose? And for them to finally hang our number up, it was just like, wow, this is this is 20 something years of uh, of dedication and hard work by a lot of people to uh, to finally get this this accomplished. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to uh, to be kind of in front of the cameras, but there's so many guys back here that that put so much effort into to just getting these horses to this point. That they're the guys that truly deserve all the recognition. In that moment, when it when it was done and you had won, what happened for you? It was just you know you you start thinking about how proud you are of the horse for for what he was able to accomplish. You know, we 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 get these horses. Can he get these horses in early? And we kind of set goals for him, and and for him to be able to to sustain everything he's been through, you know, between Southwest, winning the Southwest and coming back in the in the Arkansas Derby and being third and then jumping back up yesterday and, and running the, the race of his life. That that was all that we were thinking, you know, what how proud we are of the horse. What don't people know about Mystic Dan? He's just he's he's such a cool customer. Like you go over there and that was a nice thing about him yesterday. We got we were in the paddock and and he's just standing there with his head kind of down, just taking it all in. And the owners are kissing on him and stuff like that. And then we, we went out in the post parade and he's just kind of floating along. It was cool because like we were they had the old Kentucky home playing and stuff like that. And, and he was just like, ah, I'm I'm whatever. So then we warmed up and he didn't really phase it. Nothing really phased him. But then as we were going to the gate, he perked up and kind of got his head up and started bouncing around. I was like, oh man, this dude, he knows what's going on. He he understood the moment yesterday. That was, I think that was, that was the biggest thing is he's an athlete and he understood it was his, it was his moment to shine and, and he showed up on the big day. Are you thinking about the Preakness yet? No, we're not thinking about the Preakness yet. We're, uh, we're going to enjoy, we're going to enjoy the next few days. And then we'll we'll get to learning about the pregnancy, I'm guessing. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. It's fun. Brian, what was the plan with Doorknock on the inside when you know, did you think you would break and, and sit off Doorknock or the original plan was yeah, you know, all along all along they kept saying how they were gonna send Dornak Dornak from the inside. But then looking at it on looking at the race on paper and watching a few of the replays, I wasn't so sure Dornak Dornak was gonna be very fast. And uh, when he didn't break he didn't break sharp yesterday, and we outbroke him. I was like, "Well, I got to get to the rail and kind of get my position in front of him because that was that's one less horse that I got to try to go around." Yeah. So once once he did that and we, we kind of got in front of him, I was like, "All right, now we got our golden trip. Now we just got to work out." The biggest thing is I need we needed to get from we needed to pick out our spot at each each pole. And and the nice thing about it is I had the right horse to do that yesterday. Our, the, the good thing about it goes back to Mystic Dan's mindset. He's he's one of those horses where you can stop and go, stop and go, and, and he, he doesn't mind it. He he has gears and, and he listens to you. Mm -hmm. So once once we were able to do that, it was just kind of it was just a lot of fun to. Uh, it to all have worked out, yeah. Day, yeah. And you didn't want any part of that first group of three. You just wanted to track. No, them. yeah, I just wanted to uh, once. I I actually thought looking at it on paper and watching watching all the replays, I thought I'd be following just the touch. I thought just the touch would be quick enough and and he'd be a good target to follow. And when he wasn't anywhere to be found, and, and it just so happened to be Track Phantom on the lead, I was like, oh, wow, well, this will work too, because I had followed Track Phantom a few times down there in New Orleans, and uh, I knew he'd at least get us to the uh, to the 3 eighths pole. And once we, once we had our target and someone to follow, it was just like, okay, now 
now ride your horse and and don't worry about what everyone else is doing just be patient and just give your let mystic dan get the trip and, and let him show how good he is and what what happened at the end like the last couple hundred yards did he get a little tired or yeah he got it but you know he shot through that spot so fast and uh the last hundred yards he got they were just kind of getting to him i think it was just a testament of how good all these three-year-olds really are you know they they were bunched up. The, the horse that was second and third, they ran monstrous races. We we were just the best horse yesterday, fortunately. And uh, it, like I said, it, I think it's just a testament of how good these three-year-olds are. And three-year-olds are, and we'll see how what happens the rest of the year. Yeah. And crossing the wire, did you, you think you'd won it, or you weren't crossing sure? the wire? I was not sure. Crossing the wire, uh, Jose Ortiz and Irad, both of them, they they rode up to me and they were congratulating me because we all we're all in the same corner, so we're. And they kept congratulating me. I'm like, did I win? Did I win? And I kept asking Greg Blasi to outright. I'm like, did we win? He goes, well, the stewards are saying they, the stewards put your number up. I said, yeah, but it's not on the board yet. And it took like two or three minutes before they finally hung yeah. the number. So it was a, it was a nerve wracking few minutes. That's for sure. And then when they finally they hung us up, it was just so surreal. I didn't, I, you don't know what to do in that moment. You're just, yeah. Were you talking with Tyler at all back there? Did he No, know? I actually didn't see Tyler. Tyler pulled up kind of a little ways from me, and I didn't see him at all. I haven't seen it. Well, I seen him just for briefly last night when I made it back to the jocks room. Yeah. Well, you know, Greg Blasey last week called you the worst second time rider ever. Yeah, yeah, you awesome. seen that? Did he apologize for <laughs> no, that? No, no, no. That's all the time. He's, that been telling me, he's been telling me that for 20 years. Of course we, he has. We, we have a running joke because when I first came here to Kentucky, there was one fall and I was getting on a bunch of uh, like ranked two year olds and stuff and I fell off like six or seven times. So he still tells me, so he still, him and Lee, the other outrider, Lee Lockwood, they tell me all the time I still have the record for falling off the most <laughs> times ever at Churchill Downs in a, in a meet. I love Greg, he's yeah, hilarious. They're, they're hilarious. They're That's great. Funny. Well, you more than made up for it coming back with yeah. Greg next year. Yeah, exactly. It was, a, it was well, a good moment. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Mark.